everybody. Welcome back to the Show and Tell Show. It is another episode with Jan from Penetanguishing Museum. And we have Nicole from Penetanguishing Centennial Museum and Genevieve Carter down there sitting in beautiful downtown Springwater Township working at her own right. museum and me, Nahani. Anyway, last week Penetanguishing Centennial Museum challenged us to bring stuff out from our Coca-Cola collection. Now, Penetanguishing, that was like, that was, that was a cheap shot because <laughs> like, we all know what you had in town. So show us your best. I mean, I'm sure it's going to be phenomenal what you have to show us. Let's see what you have. <laughs> now you're really setting us up. We picked it because it is International Coca-Cola Day. So there was a purpose of us choosing Coca-Cola, uh, but we did have a Coca-Cola plant here in Penetanguishene, and to know a little bit of the history, back in 1917, Abe Moses opened the Penetang Bottling Company out of the Georgian Bay Hotel, and in about 1921, that hotel did burn down, and he moved his production onto Main Street, and in his bottling company, he did produce um, Georgian Bay Dry and Dominion Dry Pop. Um, in 1931, he did get a contract to start um, producing Coca-Cola out of his Penetang Bottling Company. And so we do have one of his original Penetang Bottling Company's Coca-Cola bottles right here. A. Moses died in 1931, and then his two daughters took over the business, and it was really his one, his stepdaughter, Helen Booth, whose husband died in World War II, and he was a high, highest decorated um, person who died in Penetanguishene in World War II. That was her husband, and so she grew the business to what many people know as a Coca-Cola plant. Um, on the main street. And here are some pictures of what she grew it to be. And then here's another picture from our archives too. And in about 1965, she did partner with um, Butch Orser um, to really uh, grow it to the way it was here. So sort of known as like Orser was a name or Booth was a name that you would associate with the Coca-Cola plant. And Orser, if people don't know, is Brian Orser was a very famous figure skater and it was his parents who were the Orsers that owned this um, Coca-Cola plant. And so we have a couple other things here that relate it to our museum is this crate here, which was a Coke crate this was produced by the made by the Beck Manufacturing Company because they did um, build boxes and they did build some for the Coca-Cola company. And then of course we've got the very uh, you know recognizable sign if you sold Coca-Cola in a spot. And so this was actually hung here at the general store when it was open in the 40s and in the early 50s. So that's some of our stuff about our Coca-Cola plant. Many people remember working at the Coca-Cola plant or picking up their pop at the Coca-Cola plant here because it was right on our main street and it actually ended up closing in 1989. So it was around for basically the majority of the 1900s on our main street in some form or fashion. So that's what we have. <laughs> Very cool. I Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Did you go when we had the challenge and go, hmm, what should I take? That, that. Yeah, no, so I'm much, sure. I'm sure. Well, it was actually, we were like, that's what we were kind of scrambling for because we assumed we had all this stuff like that we didn't really do a lot of preparation for this one and assume we could just grab stuff. And then we're like, ah, where is all our stuff? So but we, we always had that. this sign. This sign was like, yeah, we'll just show this sign if anything. Oh, and we, yeah. yeah. It's and we still take line. you back. Yeah, we still take we you back. So though, many to... bottles, but this is one of our oldest. So we have so many bottles from the Penetang Bottling Company, but this was our oldest. Mm -hmm. so I showed that one. Very cool. Now I was like, I'm gonna tell you, I was all like, you know, smarty pants last week too, thinking I knew the perfect thing. So I wasn't able to achieve that. So I'm going to let Genevieve show you what she was able to, because this is why I shouldn't be in the collections department, because I don't know where anything is. And I think I know, but I don't know. 
anyway, so Genevieve, <laughs> go ahead. And after she's done, I'm going to show you what I think I thought we had. Okay. okay. All right. So I have brought in a number of copies of um, negatives, black and white negatives from a uh, Penetang, might have been a Penetang newspaper. I'm not entirely sure. These were given to us by Vern Farrow, who was a well-known in the area uh, newspaper man. But anyway, these are all photographs uh, from the, of the Coke, bo uh, the bo Penetang bottling plant. So here is a photograph possibly before it was expanded by Helen Booth, a uh, familiar site in town. And it looks like uh, these photographs might have been all taken during an open house because there's a number of photographs of the assembly line or bottling line, whatever it was called. And uh, there's a photograph with the fleet of trucks out front. Very exciting, very busy place. More of the... Unfortunately, we don't have the newspaper that is associated with all of these um, negatives. So we don't know any of the figures with the exception of these two right here. There is Helen Booth. Ah. Yes, and she is giving something, not entirely sure what it is, uh, to a fellow named Pivot Marchadon. Uh, Pivot Marchadon was Babe Marchadon, Phil Marchadon, the baseball, uh, yeah. Major League Baseball player's brother. I okay. uh, don't know if he worked at the plant or if this was, you know, some, some, something that maybe he had won in a contest. Anyway, if you do know out there, please let me know. Uh, <laughs> here's some more photographs of the assembly line with some young children. Go and have a look around. And... Da, 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 da. more. Mm -hmm. Look at all those Coke bottles. Just makes me so thirsty. Yeah. It's a perfect day for it, too. And then last but not least, Mr. Butch or Sir. Oh, sir. oh there we go. And there we go, yes. And these are, uh, this photo, these ones are real photos, and these are from um, a large collection that we were given in 1998 of uh uh, photographs from the, the free, one of the photographers from the pre, free press. So practically anyone who'd ever had his photograph in the 1980s and 19, early 1990s uh, will be found in this collection. So Mr. Orser. Oops, Mr. Orser. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> now, I heard a little ooh and ah from you. Um, are some of those photos like you haven't seen? Yeah. Um, I don't think I, I, we have some pictures of assembly lines that were taken, but I don't think it was for those because I don't think I've seen that picture of Helen Booth in, oh. you know, in the assembly line, that picture. I think our, the ones we had must have been from the 60s. But yeah, so it was neat to see a picture of her. So, yeah. well, we'll have to make sure you get a copy because it really does belong. Yeah. In your, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. We'll sure. yeah. yeah. That whole donation, I think there was about, maybe a hundred photographs or a hundred black and white uh, negatives of all Penetang, LaFontaine, Perkinsfield oh. area events that yeah. occurred within a very narrow oh. range, date range. So uh, there's some photographs I know of Bryant's Jewelers and some of the oh, employees. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I can't remember anymore, but anyway, yeah. So yes, come and I'll show them to you. <laughs> yes. Yes. Come visit <laughs> us, we'll show you <laughs> That's what we do. <laughs> Sorry. What we do best. <laughs> so I oh, was like on. so smarty pants last week thinking, I know what we're going to show. So I spent some time, like, <clears throat> we have a giant cookbook collection. I'm sure you mm -hmm. do too. I know in here is a recipe for a cake with Coca-Cola. Uh, you think I could find it? Oh, no. And there would be. And there would be, yeah. Because I've heard of, like, using pop in... Exactly, yeah. So pop and cake. I've heard and of I was, ginger ale. I was going to be all smarty pants and make it. Oh, oh, wow. I'm still going to find and, it. I'm going to find and it. And then would you have it. delivered us some? Yeah, we're still waiting for that Johnny cake, you know. Yeah. <laughs> That's about a, that must be one of our I first know, episodes. I know. I know. I don't know who ended up. Did you take that home? Who took that home? Somebody took it home. I might have. Yeah, I think I did. I think you did. Okay. <laughs> so next week's challenge, this is one for like museum people everywhere. 
um, who take in collections, we spend like we a lot of things we get like, oh yeah, a butter churn. Oh yeah, a Coke bottle. But sometimes you get an artifact and you need to figure out what it is. Mm, oh. Yes. So our challenge next week is for like the artifact you just you just got right into the research, figuring out what it is, how it was used, just you know, and maybe you found out a really neat story about it, like that one artifact in your museum that kind of really challenged you and your research skills, like from mm. figuring out to where who it belonged to to right to what the heck is this. So that's our challenge for next week. Okay. Oh, okay. Showing off our mystery artifact that made us work for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I still take it back to the pork rinds and the chicken. Those were those were pretty <laughs> awesome challenges. So those were pretty <laughs> awesome challenges. Coming, they were. You had one coming. Yeah. Yeah, we did. But this yeah. is I think this is a good one because I think, you know, all of us working in museums, we've had our challenges with the that artifact. Right. The one that made you work for it. Okay. Same time, same okay. channel next week, and we'll see you all. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. bye.